On the floor are two foundry flasks. The one with the uh, fry pans is a 10 by 12. And uh, the larger one here is a 12 by 14. Now this may not make any sense to you right now, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. I can see now that I can only fit uh, two fry pans in there. I've, I've made a third and I was getting ready to make a, a fourth and I'm not going to do it because two is all I need. But uh, the point here is that I will make the match plate in the larger flask because the plate needs to be larger than this flask. So it's necessary to make the match plate here, but the match plate will then be used to make the finished castings, the fry pan castings, in this 10 by 12 one. Now is that clear as mud? It's July 2014 and uh, you see I've left quite a mess here on my molding bench, my McEngelvin molding bench, and as I made these little uh, uh, molds in the round flask I put the sand on the floor, I swept the floor so it was clean, so that I could keep the hot sand separated from the cold sand in the bin. For two reasons. Number one, so I don't burn myself. And number two, the uh, hot sand does not pack well. Matter of fact, in big founders they have what they call sand coolers. So I'm going to take these uh, three little castings downstairs and saw the gates off and uh, proceed to clean them up. They'll require quite a bit of filing and sanding so that they are uh, good slippery uh, castings that can be used as patterns. See you downstairs presently. Ham and eggs, anyone? I'm only going to use two of these. I already cut the gates. Now, now I'll cut them closer because I'm able to flip it over on the bandsaw and saw it a little closer. Then I'll have to start the tedious job of trying to uh, clean this up with a file right down to the parting line. That's rougher than a cob right there, but I will clean that up. This is pretty smooth here. Now again, uh, do you understand what I'm doing here? That These are just the patterns so that I can make the match plate so that I can make some fry pans. Now this, these fry pans are irregular parting line, and I talked about that before. Because you see that the parting line here is well, right down the center there, we got a little bit of a gap under underneath here. And uh, this isn't the type of pattern that we could literally just screw onto that uh, wooden or metal match plate as uh, we talked about before. So this will be a, the entire match plate is going to be a casting. And it'll look like that on one side, only mounted on an aluminum plate. And when you flip the entire plate over, you'll see this side of it to the parting line. Understand? Savvy? Okay, I'm going to start cleaning these up right now. Off camera, of course, because this is going to take quite a while. I've already been at this for four hours. I have spent exactly 45 minutes between the two of these cleaning this up, taking it to the parting line so that it looks pretty true. clean this up. I don't like that there, but that's where the gate ran in. And I clean this just a little bit with emery cloth in here. Fairly smooth. So now I got two of them ready to use as patterns. That's my backup. I didn't do anything with that, but that's what it looked like as a rough casting. Now, everything I've done this morning, well, it's after lunch now, was easy compared to what I'm going to do now. So back out to the foundry and uh, now I'm going to use these patterns to make the match plate pattern. A cast match plate pattern. I'm back at the molding bench and this flask here is the large flask. It is the 12 by 14. Now can you see the pencil line on the inside here on my uh, white molding board? That represents the 10 by 12 flask, just so I can visualize the placement of the frying pans so that I know how it'll be positioned in uh, the final uh, flask as a match plate. And I'm allowing a runner here with gates. Imagine this also as a uh, 
match plate with a dozen of these on them and possibly even nested so they can get more of them on there. That's how they would do that. Many, many of them on there. Make it pay while they're at it with a 12 year old boy doing the molding with bare feet. I've done the first half, rolled it over. Now I need to part that down like I did before. Now what makes this different than just casting uh, two more little fry pans is that uh, after I do the other side and remove the two patterns before I pour it, I'm going to take this 3 8 square stock, just 3 8 cold roll, and I'm going to cut four pieces of it. One, and then it'll be two, three, four. And the purpose of that is to space the two halves of the flask. In other words, I'm going to separate the cope and the drag by three eighths of an inch. And when I pour this, the entire inside will be uh, uh, filled with aluminum. Not only where the patterns are, but that three eighths thickness. Now, I'd like to even make it half inch but I'm very worried about having enough aluminum because even using my largest flask it's going to be a close one. So I'm going to cut these uh, in a minute here and move them in just a little rather than putting them right on the edge here like I usually do. I'm going to move them in just a little bit and that will use less aluminum because if I am short of aluminum then I got to do the whole thing over again and, and that flask is the biggest one that I've got and it's kind of scary to use. Back when I was in my prime and teaching, I had made so many, many different patterns this way at the high school as poured uh, match plates. I think I made it too easy for the kids because I did all of that, but I remember making one particular project. Uh, it was a, a weather vane with a rooster on it and was quite large, you know, with, with a, oh, I suppose, you know, 15 inch long arrow on it or a, and a pretty good size rooster. And uh, there was about six castings there, and I had a match plate made for each one. Now, I haven't done this in 25 or 30 years, so this is you know, kind of new to me now, so i got to think through it. But I've already cut this 3 8 material here that I talked about, and after I uh, ram the other side, which I haven't done yet, then I'm going to put this whole thing on the floor so I don't have to uh, try to pour it up high with that big uh, flask. But uh, I'll, I'll put a sprue here in the corners, one here and one here, and fill the whole thing. Now I will also pack some sand around here, around the corners, because there is a possibility of leakage. I've had that happen, where the tiniest hole, the, the metal just pours out, and then you've got to do the whole thing over again. Also, I remember that sometimes as the hot aluminum hits the cold steel here, I would get some... Uh, short runs or some cold shuts, I guess we called them back then. And uh, all right, that's enough talking on that. I'm going to take these off for now and ram up the other side off camera. Here's the two halves of the mold. And notice that I've got a sprue in one corner, or I guess you call it a riser in the other corner. Now all I have to do is to try to get these patterns out of here without damaging anything, which might be kind of tricky. Then I'm going to put this half on the floor and lay those square bars in there and reassemble the thing. It's quite heavy, that's why I'm moving it onto the floor one half at a time. One last look at this before I close the mold. Notice the 3 h square stock around the perimeter and there's the other half which I will bring down and close right now there it is I'm huffing and I'm puffing that might be a bit overkill but I got it dammed up all the way around the foundry sand on the floor so it'll be easy to pour and now I'm going to turn the furnace on and that's going to take about 45 minutes because I'm going to have to keep uh, adding to the pot until she's full to the brim and good to the last drop. I like to make sure that my molds are full. I don't take any chances. I have to laugh whenever my friend fills the snowmobile. 
with the gasoline, you know, there's gas everywhere, and he always says, I like to make sure that tank is full. Okay, uh, notice that I also use C-clamps to hold the mold together, possibly separating due to the hydraulic pressure. Probably unlikely with the aluminum, but I've, I've poured lead in a large flask like this, and you wouldn't believe the pressure. It just bulges out the sand and separates the two halves of the mold. And that's why you often see uh, an iron foundry where they have weights, rather heavy weights, on top of all of the flasks when they pour them. All right, we're going to let that cool for about an hour. Open it up and see what we got. Okay, it's the time for reckoning. Let's see what it looks like. Now, excuse my sandals, but everything is uh, pretty cool. And uh, it got hot here, and I had to put my shorts on and sandals. So let's see what this thing looks like. Okay, let's see what this cast match plate looks like. It's still kind of warm. And there it be. Now I'm going to cut that mess off on the top, but can you see what we've got here? The pattern incorporated into the plate, all cast as one. I would like the plate to have been a little bigger than this, so it would fit in the, the flask a little better, but I was uh, constrained by the size of the flasks that I have and the amount of aluminum that I could pour. But I think I did have a little extra aluminum, so it could have been bigger. Remember, this is 3 8 thick. I probably could have got, got by with a uh, half inch thick, but there would have been no need. So let me cut this off so we can take a better look at it. Boy, do I have a mess to clean up. I hope my wife doesn't get mad at me. But this is the end result, and I'm still not done. So this is the match plate itself, a cast match plate. Still warm, but not bad. And that is the flask that I will use. This is the 8x10, or the 10x12 flask that I will use to, to cast, because uh, now I want to actually cast... some little fry pans from this. So what's the next step? Well, it would have been nice if it was a little bit longer such that I would be able to drill holes into it and the flask pins would, would go right uh, through it because it's going to slide around a little bit. But that's the best I could do with the amount of sand and the flask size that I got and the, and, uh, the, uh, the little pot that I, I uh, use to melt the metal and pour out of so but what I'll do next I'm gonna go down the basement put this on the Bridgeport mill and I'm gonna mill these uh, remnants here of the uh, sprues off and I don't mind uh, milling down a little bit deeper than what I need and then I'm gonna fill it with uh, body putty I hope everybody's still with me this has got to be cleaned up too. Then I would like to put a runner in here and the gates because that's how they would do it. Now I could get by with, uh, with doing that all with a spoon but I've carried this thing through this far so I might as well continue. It is now five o'clock in the afternoon so I have worked on this including the cooling down time for eight or nine hours. 
Now you know why pattern makers get $90 an hour. And as far as I'm concerned, they work pretty cheap considering what I've been through here all day. So I'll see you down in the machine shop here momentarily. Stick with me now, don't turn this off.